Hello students, welcome back to this course on visual semiotics for visual communication. We have so far seen many of the aspects related to human communication, uh, visual perception, how visual perception affects with human communication, what are the motives of human communication and so on. We also looked into how visual compositions are created. When we talk about visual communication, visual perception, essentially we are looking at some visuals around us. And these visuals around us are nothing but agglomeration of different things coming together. They are all together and that is what we are perceiving, we are seeing and we are processing in our brain. And while we are doing that, what we are uh, experiencing is some of the elements that we discussed, some of the elements of uh, design or visual design or visual communication, different authors, uh, different subjects, different experts uh, term them differently. But at the end of the day, the idea is certain components coming together termed as elements form the form the composition or forms the arena, forms the field, forms the visual field, foreground, background, all of them together creates a field of vision. And based on that, we receive those inputs and hence we get certain uh, communication done through it. So, so that that is what happens in many of the cases. Now, the essential question that arises is how with all this knowledge, with all these components together, we are creating things now. Now, there are various professional areas, there are various individuals, there are various experts, there are various organizations who harness, who banks on this visual communication. Say for example, advertising industry. Advertising industry utilizes different media. They advertise using a print ad, the ads which come out on newspaper, on, uh, uh, on billboards, on magazines, various other banners, uh, posters and things like that. So, these are all print media which comes out, advertising agencies come up with that. They come up with audio visual me media or motion picture media which are the jingles, the advertisements which come on the television or it, it comes on the mobile phone or it is it's in a GIF format, in a, in a movable format which comes on the, on the computer as an advertisement. So, the, there could be varied medium. In future, there could be newer medium with development of newer technology coming in, newer media uh, uh, might come into picture and there could be different other forms of uh, visual communication. So, media is no bar, it cuts across media. But what is important to, for us to know is two things. One is what are the different professional areas which bank on to this visual communication as such, because many of you may want to explore uh, some of these avenues in future as an extension uh, of this learning. And the other aspect which we should learn, so one is the professional area, professional aspects, how it works in real time, in real world. And the other aspect is to understand the theoretical understanding of this, how this is utilized uh, or, or how this could be realized in reality, what, what fundamental should be used to design it, to make it visible, to implement it. So, these two are two things which we are going to talk today and essentially there are four professional areas, we will jump on to that in a while. But before we do so, one essential thing you, uh, you have to understand is what, what composes a visual com, uh, com, uh, communication or, or a composition when it comes to communication or the semiotic aspect to it. Many a times I have used semantic and semiotic uh, uh, you know uh, irreversibly, I mean uh, they are very reversible in nature, many a times they are uh, used synonymously. But there is a difference, in the next lecture we will talk about that, there is a difference between semiotics and semantics, but colloquially speaking many a times they are used uh, in place of uh, another, one another. So, uh, let us move on to now uh, to the 
components of visual communication. So, when we talk about components of visual communication, so the components of visual communication. So, that has two aspects, one is the image aspect and another is the textual aspect. So, whenever we look into a visual composition, we has an image aspect to it and we have a text aspect to it and together they deliver a message. So, these two together form a message or these two together form an information that is percolated. In the other day, we talked about how communication is happening. Communication is happening with an information exchange between two entities. Here, there are two entities. So, one could be a designer and another could be a viewer or you can call him an audience or intended audience you may uh, call them. So, between that you are you basically you are creating a visual, you are creating a visual and that visual might have an image component and that visual might have a text component. That is clear that there is an image component and there is a text component whenever we talk of a visual composition. And this image again could be broken down into two uh, types. The first type could be representational representational or the second could be abstract. So, one could be representational image and the other could be an abstract image. Say for example, if I show you this particular image which we used in our other lectures. So, this is what kind of image is this? There is a little bit of text please ignore this part, but if you look at the image as such what kind of image? are you looking at? It is trying to represent a real life scenario. It is trying to represent a scenery. It is trying to represent a house. This is trying to represent the mountains. This is trying to represent the sun and so on. So, we really do not have an abstract aspect associated with it, but there are images which are abstract in nature. So, uh, we can talk about abstract images sometime, but right now for us to understand the whole arena or the component of visual com, uh, communication revolves around an image part, which is a pure visual field filled with image quality. It has the quality of an image and that image is either representational say an image trying to represent me. Okay. So, how best I could be represented by an image would give you an understanding of that. The other could be an abstract representation. Say you are trying to again represent me, but in an abstract form which is image. Okay, so, that is also possible. So, say for example, if I show you this graphic, say I am, so this is me. So, you are, this is an abstract imagery or it could be even this. Now, so, this is representing a professor say for example, or professor m g that is me. So, this is an abstract representation of me, it does not represent me of course, I guess so, <laughs> but this is an abstract representation which is representing me and look what I have done over here, I have added a text. So, this part is essentially a text. So, 
I have added. So, this component is the image component and abstract image component is this part and this part is a text component that I have used. Had it been a truly representational image ha had I been talking about you would have actually have to get a professional painter who would paint a real time representation of mine. So, I hope that gives you a clear understanding that this creates the entire arena of visual composition. Whatever you look around, take a look around wherever you are sitting and uh, visiting this course, take a look around and see all that you see is an image or a text or a combination of both and then this image could be a combination of real time images representational or it could be abstract. So, this creates the whole field of visual composition or visual communication and this all works in a setup of socio cultural context. Nothing that you are seeing around you will make a sense until and unless it is put into a setup of a particular social cultural scenario. We have talked about it enough. Now, you will be able to put things together how it is slowly shaping up. There is a notion of communication, there is a notion of society, there is a notion of culture. So, all of these things are coming together now and creating a visual composition through these two, three things. And if a designer now is designing this, all you have to do is look into the image or create the image, look into the text or create the text, bring them together in an effective manner, arrange it in a such in, in certain fashion. So, that what is happening? The communication is happening in a effective, efficient manner and in an engaging manner. And we will now immediately look into the four areas of visual communication and what their intentions are. So, let us look into the slides on the four areas of visual communication. So, this is what I have already discussed. So, there is image, text, together they form visual communication, design is taking place and the context of socio culture is where this whole thing is taking shape. Now, let us look into the very first area of visual communication, professional area which we talk about is the design for information. So, there are various artifacts around you which are designed for information only. Okay. To give you a very, very simple example which all of you have experienced in your life is a signage. When you go to a mall, when you go to a, in your school, you look for a signage say for example, the fire exit where it is or more commonly say the toilet. What do you look at? You look at a visual which communicates that this is where the toilet is or this is the toilet and for you which you should be using. So, what essentially happening is it is just giving you an information it is just answering to the query that you are having in a visual fashion. Understood? So, there are many examples if you look into the slide there are so many examples: the signages, map, plan all kind of publishing material that you see uses lot of information with them tables, graphs, diagram, charts, instructions, manuals, various reports informational display. So, there are various displays LED display and so on, control panel, interfaces, interfaces we deal every day mobile phones or gadgets, all of them are providing us certain kind of information, programs, catalogs and so on. So, these this is the area we are talking about, these, is the, these are the artifacts which are used in design for information. Now, we will look into some very essential aspect of design for information. These essential aspects of design for information would help you understand how the areas are different, what is the importance of this particular area and how it is dealt with. So, the first aspect is the intent of 
this is informing. We have talked about informing, sharing, uh, representing and things like that. Here the intent is to inform, that is all. You are looking for an information, you have kind of a query with you. The idea is you should get this information bang, you should get this information correct, you should be able to understand this information correctly and that is the purpose of design for information. So, someone who is designing for inter information in, in uh, when it comes to a visual communication, the idea is look into the fact that am I answering to the query of the user in a efficient fashion. So, we will look into some other aspects to it. So, this has, so the motive is informing that is the very first point. Then the second point is the knowledge and legibility. Now, that is something very, very important that an information would not percolate, an information would lose its efficiency if there is a, there is a difference of knowledge, if there is a difference of understanding or if there is an ambiguity. The whole purpose of design for information would be jeopardized. So, the very first aspect you should be uh, taking care is the motive should be just informing. The second is the base, the knowledge base, the understanding should be at an equal uh, level or, or, or should be at a, at a common platform for everyone to grasp it. So, that there is less of unambiguous, uh, less, less of uh, ambiguousness. And then the third, uh, the fourth point is directly answers to the query. Make sure that it directly answers to what the user is looking for. Do not confuse the user. The answer that one is seeking, he should get the answer very quickly from there. Then it talks about visual detection and acuity. Now, this is very, very important aspect when it comes for designing for information. So, the detection should be correct. In today's world, we are filled with uh, visual uh, information. We, it is cluttered everywhere in your mobile uh, environment that you see around in the streetscape, everywhere there is lot of information bang onto you, there is lot of information bombarded. So, can you detect the right information in the right way and at the right time? That is the efficiency of uh, a good design, can you do that the right way. So, that that is the first point you should look at, there should not be any un, uh, uh, ambiguousness towards detection and its legibility. One should not be spending more than a millisecond in understanding that information, otherwise it is gone. You know people would not even look at it twice people would not pay attention to the information that is being given, they will seek for another information, they will seek for another mode, another media, but your design will fail somewhere. So, that is one purpose one should keep in mind and then it should be conversant in comprehension. So, there should it should be easily comprehensive, I mean it should be comprehensive enough and it should be conversant, people should be able to grasp it and understand it and take a decision based on that. Because all the information that we are uh, utilizing, that information comes handy somewhere. Say when you are doing a Google search, you are looking for searching for something, you want to get the information very quickly and then utilize that information which you have received somewhere else for that sharing, you know cooperative, human cooperative communication, all that is coming into picture now together. So, whatever the purpose be, you are trying to grasp that information and use it somewhere else, right. So, it has to be comprehensive enough, it has to be detectable and it has to be utilized, shifted very quickly. So, so this whole arena has to be worked out in this particular case. And there are two different activities which are associated with design for information. So, one particular activity is, so there are two different activities which take place as a design, there are two different activity when it comes for information. So, these two different activity is 
first activity is you are doing an information organization. So, there are a lot of bits and pieces which are there. So, you have to organize this first. So, there is lot of information which are there scattered. So, first thing that you have to do is you have to organize this information. Now, comes the second part which is you have to represent it, you have to represent it now. So, it is not just about theoretically fundamentally understanding the information and placing it, organizing it, but at the same time now since we are talking about visual communication, you have to represent it. Say for example, you have got a lot of data around your research, numerical data, lot of numerical data. Is it possible to verbally communicate that data? So, you have 15, 30, 95, 60, 56, you have lot of data with you. So, you can organize that data of course, from lowest to highest, highest to lowest, frequency, whatever the case may be. You have fundamental organizational principles related to it, but the next question is how do you represent. So, for that you will bank on to a representational mode and you have to think about it. Is it going to be a table, is it going to be a graph, if it is a graph what kind of graph, if it is a table what kind of a table and so on. So, two very important aspects are there at this moment we should understand one is the information organization and the other is the information representation. So, this covers the whole gamut of design for information. Now, let us move on to another aspect of uh, another area of design which is heavily used which is very lucrative professionally is design for persuasion. So, let us look at design for persuasion and what exactly design for persuasion is intended to is affecting the behavior very very important. While information is intended to inform you to answer to a query, here the case is different. It intends to change your behavior, you are using this product today by this particular design for persuasion, it will make you persuade and use this product tomorrow. So, that is the power which visual communication has, we many a time ignore, but we are driven by that and that is exactly what this professional area does. So, here the motive is requesting many a times in an aggressive manner, but ideally the motive here is requesting, you are, you are requesting to change the behavior in a certain manner and the mo uh, you are informing at the same time you are requesting also. So, here we will now look at there are three broad types of advertising which we talk about. So, three broad areas of advertising are uh, 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 of design for persuasion are advertising, propaganda and social interest communication. So, the first one is advertising. So, if you look at advertising, so this is type 1 where it is very direct all of us have experienced advertising in lesser or greater amount. Advertising again could be of commercial in nature where it is it relates to some kind of consumer product. So, it relates to some kind of consumer product in picture or it could be service or it could be other things as well or others. So, basically it is a consumable affair that we are talking about when we are talking about a commercial advertising. Okay. So, we are talking of a commercial advertising here, but advertising as well could be non-commercial. So, it could be non-commercial where it has a social intent. So, many a times it is not related only to or it is not restricted to consumer product or services, but it has a social intent as well. So, that covers the advertising part and then we can have the type 2 is the propaganda part. 
where we propaganda when we talk about immediately the picture which comes to our mind is that of a political propaganda and which is very correct worldwide it is heavily used for various purposes political or ideological propaganda is something which banks are designed for persuasion and the third type it, if we look at there is a third type which is some kind of a social interest communication where the intent is again social, but which is truly affecting human society, human being in a very cooperative form, in a very tangible human aspect it is affecting. So, these are three different types of uh, design for persuasion and uh, uh, that is heavily uh, used in different segments. So, I will show you one example, one uh, very interesting example, I will draw it out if you uh, see it here. So, Trio Dwensky in 1986, sorry in 1986 there was he, he created an anti nuclear war or you know anti nuclear poster, where he used can you identify this particular device? Many of you can get it. So, this is a boomerang. So, he used so a missile or, or, or a nuclear weapon. So, he used, he used black in color. Of course, this was visually much better represented. This is an abstract representation <laughs> right now, but it was much better represented. But the way he tried to communicate was he created a boomerang out of a nuclear weapon. So, the communication was so so precise, this has a social intent, this had an ideological intent and this has this was non-commercial in nature and it was trying to persuade it, it was trying to change your behavior. It is it is meant, it is designed for a particular persuasion of an idea, persuasion of a thought. So, that is how it was done. So, now we move on to the next uh, set, next professional area which is design for education that is we, we, we encounter that all the time and this particular course is an example is a classic example of design for education which is done through a visual communication way. So, this lies in between information and persuasion. So, what does that, that essentially means it is not mere transformation uh, transmission of information. So, it is not just transmission of information here the motive is sharing. So, there is an aspect of say sharing with that. So, there is an aspect of participation. So, the idea here is that you will get the information right, you will have a persuasion, it will change your behavior to some extent, but more than that it will enable you with some amount of reasoning, with some amount of aiding you with, uh, with mechanisms for decision making and which appreciates participation. So, the, a student which is looking into a book but nothing getting into the brain or colloquially speaking nothing affecting him, nothing persuading him, the information not being utilized is a failure in terms of design for communication. So, it has to be participatory in nature. So, that is very essential when we talk about design for education. So, if you look at here, so persuade individuals to think on their own, to judge, to make decisions on the basis of personal reflection. So, whatever information you are getting, whatever persuasion that is happening helping you for a reflection of information. Now, we look into the last area or the fourth area, I should not be calling it last, many could be important, many could be lesser important depending on case to case scenario. So, design for administration, administrative processes, systems heavily rely on visual communication. One of the very, very interesting example is a movie ticket, a currency note. Okay. So, there, there are new currency being launched, there are new coins being launched, there are new uh, designs which are coming up. So, what essentially that means? It has an administrative purpose associated with it. So, it has to be very robust, it has to be very secured these are the qualities which are associated with uh, design for administration. 
it has to be adaptable over course of time there should not be any kind of any in there should not be any room for uh, you know malpractice or mal usage or miscommunication it cannot happen say in a movie ticket all the information related to uh, to that particular show should be clearly stated administrative from an administrative perspective or a corporate communication the administrative rippling of information should be clear and here if you look at it honors order and efficiency that comes prime over here so you have to have an order to do certain aspects in a particular fashion you have to have efficiency and here the motive is mixed there is requesting there is informing and there is sharing all of them coming together as i mentioned security is very very important over here it has to be adaptable it has to cut across wide range of people wide range of audience it has to go for mass uh, validation mass usage mass communication so design for administration has to be uh, designed in that particular fashion and it has to be accessible very very important aspect in today's world a design should be accessible even a visual communication design should be accessible to people with visual disability with mental disability or with any other disability for that matter it has to be accessible it has to be reachable by people in short so that covers today's lecture on different professional areas of visual communication thank you for joining